This is the WMD device's Geiger counter. I've only had it for about 8 months now, but it's been super fun for getting those gritty industrial metal types of sounds. It has this innate ability to dominate your pedal board like a nuclear blast. These things are so cool that Mick Gordon actually has two of them and used them on the Doom 2016 soundtrack, here and here. And yeah, I may or may not be trying to rebuild that thing for real using the actual equipment. Let me just see how much one of these Cali 76s are. Yeah, nope. So what is the Geiger counter? The Geiger counter is essentially a distortion slash bit crusher with an 8-bit computer built in. There's a high gain preamp that feeds into the internal computer. This allows you to get some gnarly tones out of it you wouldn't be able to do out of a conventional distortion box. Since this is essentially software in a box. But what the hell is a bit crusher? They're awesome. A bit crusher essentially takes your incoming smooth signal and degrades it. It does this by chopping it up into little slices called samples. If the rate of the samples is high enough, it sounds natural like this, like what you're hearing right now. If the sample rate goes low enough, it starts to sound like I'm crapping my kid. The other way a bit crusher works is by reducing the bandwidth of the signal. An average audio file has between 65,000 to about 16 million different possible volume levels. Your sound might go from being small and delicate and quiet to being this big boisterous sound all of a sudden. By reducing the bandwidth, also known as the bit depth, we can reduce that from 65,000 possible volumes down to 255 possible volumes, or even down to just two, one or zero, on or off. This would make it into basically a square wave. This is what gives bit crushes that retro aesthetic. The Geiger counter uses both methods, sample rate reduction and bit depth reduction. And if you dial this thing to the extremes, it starts to sound super noisy, but in a good way. So let's dive in. Starting off with the look, this thing looks radioactive. That can't be good. While the red and yellow color scheme is something that might be off-putting to some people, aren't those part of the food brand starter pack colors? I actually kind of like it here. It stands out so prominently on a pedal board that your eye draws to it pretty naturally. The bold look represents a bold sound. This thing has a lot of controls packed into a small area. While there is an appeal to a one-knob wonder like the Behringer Vintage Phaser or Phase 90, I like having more control given to me. If you're a studio-only person, you're probably using this thing at waist level and tweaking with the knobs anyway. I probably couldn't recommend this pedal for live use unless you have it tweaked with your desired settings already, or you're using it in some sort of noise improv jam or something. Starting from the top, up here is the preamp stage. At zero, the gain knob lets the sound through the distortion circuit virtually unaffected. At max, it crushes. I do find that depending on the rest of the settings, adding more gain here past 10% can have diminishing returns or massive changes to your sound which makes me a bit unconfident what's going to happen when I actually crank this thing. The tone knob here can be enabled or disabled via the toggle switch here. When I would mess around with this thing on my actual pedal board, I honestly find myself leaving it disabled more often than not. But when I was running tests for this video, I found that gain staging basically required me to leave the tone knob engaged. This pedal outputs a lot of volume, and sometimes it's smarter to just leave the tone control enabled so just so you can gain stage properly. Down here is the meat and potatoes of this thing. The sample rate knob filters the signal down lower and lower as you turn it to the left. I find that around 3 o'clock or so is the sweet spot to getting some of that down sampled goodness without killing your tone completely.
The bit depth knob essentially controls the dynamics of the input signal, and if you drop this down to one, you get one bit of volume control, either on or off. At the 8-bit bit depth, you get 255 different possible volume levels. This seems to work the most when you go to the extreme left. The mask mode confused me, to be honest, but I think I've worked out that it's sort of like a noise gate, where anything beneath a certain threshold is filtered out. The wavetable knob here switches the active wavetable. Oh, <laughs> did I forget to mention the wavetables? This Mother Geiger has a hexadecimal display up here with 252 different wavetables. That's pretty awesome. One of the things that impresses me the most about this pedal is that there's a huge variety of sounds in it. Changing the wavetable alone results in massive changes to your tone, which honestly could be a bit overwhelming for some people. But you might find yourself asking, what the hell is a wavetable? Basically, wavetables take an incoming signal and map them to this pre-existing shape like this. On the left, we have the original signal that I sent through the pedal. On the right, you can see an oscilloscope showing us what the pedal is actually doing to the signal. And if we look at these wavetables here, we can see this sort of stair-steppy motion, but reversed. Now, if I load in a crazier wavetable, like B0, which is funnily enough the WMD logo, you'll notice that you can see it, again, reflected back to us. I'm not sure of the exact processing that WMD is doing to the signal to get it to be reversed like this, but I'm sure it's part of the secret sauce that gives this pedal that unique sound it has. The crazier of a wavetable we load, the more exotic of a sound we get. Wavetable synthesis is one of the backbones of a lot of dubstep sounds. I would sometimes find myself accidentally invoking some of that stuff when I would cycle through the wavetables rapidly. The other thing that the wavetable knob does is change what modes each of these other knobs are in. By pushing the wavetable knob like a button, you can change the bit depth and sample rate knobs to act either pre or post wavetable. The default is post wavetable, which means that all the distorted goodness happens and then these knobs have an effect. When we change the sample rate knob to pre wavetable mode, we end up getting an entirely different sound out of the exact same settings. If we do it with mask mode, set it to pre-wavetable, it actually filters out portions of our wavetable causing all sorts of weirdness. WM Devices has a PDF of all the wavetables. I think they must have sent that PDF through the Geiger counter because that's a lot of JPEG. The volume knob is a volume knob. It does its job and does it cleanly. It can get pretty loud, so I'd be aware of just cranking the thing. But I'm sure that's what you're looking for, isn't it? WM Devices actually has their own YouTube channel where they go super in-depth on this pedal, and they show off some really cool features. And I think it's actually demoed by the creator of the pedal. I left a link down in the description below for that. That's all I really have to say about the Geiger counter. The only thing I didn't really talk about is the control voltage input right here. This can be used to control the sample rate and bit depth knobs. I think in newer models you can actually use it to cycle through the wavetables. That can be used to get really like dubstepy, gritty sounds, something like Cell Dweller or Skrillex. A lot of the wavetables seem to be grouped in similar looking wavetables. Uh, and being able to cycle through those with control voltage would make it far easier to get some of those dubstep sounds. Anyway, that's it. Let me know what else you'd like me to cover. I plan on covering tons of stuff. I have like idiot box effects here. I have some stuff from Dwarfcraft, Svex. Um, I also have some stuff from like Retro Mechanical Labs that are really cool. 
If there's anything specific you'd like me to cover, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time.